Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're going to talk about using plants in a mixed border screening. So creating a screen between you and a neighbor, between you and a building, between you and whatever it is you're trying to, you know, you know, create a private space uh, for your garden. I've, I've talked frequently, I've talked a lot over the years about not putting yourself in a prison if you don't have to. Uh, so the other side of our fence over there, there, the city owns a little bit of land and the back of the house over there screen, the back of the three houses that we could see over there have things between us and them. So there's really no point in putting any screening plants across there, maybe one day, but for now there's no point really in screening that and it allows us to see out into open space. The back line back here happens to be wooded, don't see any point in covering up any of that. It's all just growing natural. Unfortunately, a few invasives back there, but it's not on this property, so uh, that's life. This side over here, we happen to have a neighbor very, very close, uh, and they spend a lot of time in their back garden, and we spend a lot of time over here in our back garden, and this is the spot that kind of chose, you know, to build, you know, build basically a wall uh, between us and them. No, like them perfectly fine, just don't want to come out the back door and, and have a conversation with them every time we come out. When I do consultation work, how frequently as we, they, as folks show me photos of their back garden, you know, there frequently there'll be a house that's next to you and there'll be a bathroom window up on the second floor of that house. You know, that's the kind of space that I'm going to pick something big and tall to cover that up. But that doesn't mean I need to cover that entire wall you know, that entire line with something that gets three stories tall. I just want something that's going to get two or three stories tall just to cover that window and then step down from there. Several reasons why I don't want a lot of super, super tall things in my screen if I can avoid it. Uh, a lot of those things that will stay narrow and get 30 feet tall, uh, let's, let's say green giant arborvita, which can get 50, or Leyland cypress that can get even, t you know, both of those can get 50 plus. Or if I'm using emerald arborvita that could ultimately get 25, 30 feet tall, something like that. Those plants over time, if you will go and look at older ones, they block the sunlight at the bottom uh, of, their own, of themselves and end up very thin at the bottom. And so old Leyland cypress hedges, you can go to the bottom of them and look directly through them. So down here where we're looking through, it's kind of naked. Uh, and then they're great screening plants if you're 25 feet tall, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so keep that in mind. The bigger the plant gets, the more likely it is to thin at the bottom over time and create a situation where it doesn't, it's not an effective screen anymore and you end up having to put another layer uh, out in front of it. The other thing about lining up all those soldiers is that if some sort of disease or insect problem comes along, some sort of wind related issue with Leyland's, uh, that's been the biggest issue with them as we've seen disease enter them as well but the bigger events have been when you have that wall of Leyland's uh, and you have a big wind event like we can have in the southeast you know hurricane events it can just lay them over and once they're laid over it is very expensive to get them removed somebody's going to make a comment down below on what i just said they've spent thousands of dollars having Leyland cypress green giant arborvita removed from their garden not talking completely against them. If you have that spot, you know, where you need something tall, you know, those plants are perfectly fine. Just again, avoiding lining them up, all of the same thing, because we can also, if you get any kind of disease issue, any kind of insect issue attacking that one thing, you have the potential to lose your entire screen. So picking, picking plants that are kind of going to get to a height to allow you, allow the screen, and then mixing them up so that you don't have them wiped out by insect or disease. So instead of losing an entire screen to insects, wind, disease, drought, or whatever it is, if you only potentially lose one of them, uh, you know, if you're in a mixed border, when you replant it, you know, this would be the kind of window you would have temporarily and then, you know, whatever it is you're replanting in that space can fill in pretty quick, but you'd only lose a gap like this, you know, losing one plant. Uh, this clay era just happens to be a little slower growing. It's been planted as long as these things. And then, so our border over on this side of the property has 10 different plants. And they've been picked for, you know, fast growth. Okay, so this section right here, which is the most important section, the Sunshine Ligustrum, very fast growing. 
Osmanthus fragrance, very fast growing. Laura Petalum, that purple plant that you saw behind me at the beginning, very fast growing. So an upright uh, Laura Petalum, not one of the dwarfs, obviously. That's um, Carolina Midnight, Laura Petalum, regular Osmanthus fragrance, which happens to be blooming now. And then the Sunshine Ligustrum um, with the gold uh, foliage. All of these things are picked for being evergreen. So these are leafy evergreens. You don't necessarily have as much of an option up in really colder areas because your, your screening plants tend to be out on the edge where there's wind-related ish, issues. You don't have the option as much to having leafy evergreens in really cold areas. You're probably going to be leaning more, slightly more on conifers than we can here. But I highly recommend in the south where you can have leafy evergreens to use mostly leafy evergreen plants because leafy evergreen plants, if something goes wrong, if something goes, if it gets really cold and knocks one of these things back or you know, some sort of insect disease related issue, whatever it is, it gets broken off by wind, a limb falls on it, whatever the heck it is, most of these things can be cut low to the ground and will just flush right back out. You know, you don't really have that option with a Leyland Cypress to cut it off to the ground and have it, have it respond, you know, or an Emerald Arborvite or whatever it is. You really can't cut those things off to a foot tall and have them, you know, come back. Maybe, maybe, but most likely not. But these leafy evergreens can be reset if they get out of control, get too wide, get damaged in some way. So lean on these in places where you can. So now I've got you convinced to grow a mixed screen of leafy evergreen plants if you can. Uh, let's think about um, you know how to go about selecting them and uh, designing with them because uh, you know there's a lot of opportunity here to do a lot of interesting things. We have again there's 11 different plants making up this screen going across. Some of them have reached a height that is now working for us. Some of them still need a little bit of growth and time. But we're picking things for foliage color. So with this gray ghost Elysium uh, as an example of that and then generally contrasting it with some sort of darker green foliage plant, uh, breaking them apart that way. So we, we can use foliage color. We can use flower. So a lot of these things along this, along this path are blooming. That Elysium I showed you at the beginning will bloom early spring. Uh, this uh, orange flowering Osmanthus is starting to flower now and will flower during the fall, during cool season, uh, times of year. Again, they're also going to keep their leaves during the winter time. This Clara, not really grown for uh, flowers at all. It does flower, very insignificant flowers, but it has this pink foliage anytime it's growing. And then it has that variegation uh, down in the bottom of it. This Chinese, uh, uh, this, uh, Chinese snowball, Viburnum, uh, evergreen in our area can be slightly deciduous in zone six uh, where they're hardy to this thing blooms in the spring and then blooms again in the fall with the big clusters of white flowers. It's finishing its second flowering of the year right now. Uh, just a great plant, super showy flowers, great foliage. Uh, as you can see, this is Sunshine Ligustrum and the sunshine's on it right now. Uh, this is what it's going to do all the time. This is a sterile uh, Chinese privet. So it has this incredible gold foliage. I'm gonna cut this pretty far back during the winter time. It needs a haircut. Uh, at this point, but it's always showing off over here with this. And when the sun's just peeking up over the house now, you can see you know, what kind of a pop of color it is. There's a regular Osmanthus fragrance behind it that's now maybe 11 feet tall. Uh, it's absolutely full of flowers right now. This is gonna be a cool season flowering plant. So it's you know October, September, October, November, December, right through April or May. The Laura Petalum, uh, here, this uh, was picked for two reasons. It's got the purple foliage year round on it. And then it's got almost a red frilly flower really early in the season, like before our frost free date, before April 15th. And then again, typically in the fall, it will put on a few flowers as well. This is a really beautiful holly, but it's only been in the ground for a little over a year. This is a holly called Screenplay, Southern Living Plant Collection one. Super fast growing. It is grown. It's doubled in height this year, uh, maybe 18 months in the ground at this point, but during this growing season, it more than doubled in height and mass. It's gonna be a, a heavy fruiting uh, variety in the future. It's gonna get it 20 feet tall, but super, super narrow. There's another Elysium to the left of that called Miss Scarlet. 
uh, it should jump up this next year. Sometimes these Elysium will take a year to settle in. They get, they're not the most drought tolerant thing in their first year in the ground, but then they become pretty drought tolerant after that. There's a vine on the fence behind it, and I highly recommend using vines as part of your screening, especially if you have like a six foot tall fence, you can get 18 inches or something above the fence with a vine uh, on some sort of, str uh, some sort of string or whatever you want to, want to stake it up with wire. Uh, and sometimes that foot and a half is all you need for a screen. And then you could put lower things in front of the fence rather than thinking you need 25 foot tall things. There's a conifer to the left of that. The only conifer that's in this uh, screen is this podocarpus. Uh, there are lots of options for upright narrow podocarpus. Uh, so, you know, keep, you know if, you're in the, if you're in the south, really easy if you have narrow spaces. You go down to Charleston, <laughs> half the gardens in Charleston or use some sort of podocarpus on small lots to screen one another. Uh, easy, easy plants for that. Uh, this end of the line has another Osmanthus fragrance. You can see all the crazy amount of flowers that are on it right now. Incredibly, incredibly fragrant. So the holly is gonna bloom uh, in the spring. The Elysium is gonna bloom in the spring. The podocarpus has really interesting new growth uh, on it. This is a fall blooming thing again, next to a spring blooming thing. So there's this mixture of, of texture uh, in the leaves, color in the leaves, flower time. You really get to have some fun uh, using mixing up these things in a mixed border. And again, if I lo we lose something, we're only gonna lose one thing. You know, I, I do have a couple Osmanthus fragrance in here, but other than, you know, everything else is just a one-off. Uh, it can be so, a little more difficult um, to lay them out. But if you went and got some interesting things, you can just put the pots down in place and move them around a few times. And again, aim the tallest things uh, at the spots where you need the tallest things and use the lower things where you'd like to look out, you know, where you have an option where you're not looking into someone's backyard or their play set or whatever it is and leave some long views where you can. Uh, so you don't feel like you're putting yourself into a prison. So hopefully I've convinced you you know, to, you know, use some sort of mixed border. One other thing I'd like to point out is things like Emerald Arborvita, if you have deer, you know, they'll limb them up in time. That's another thing that could be taking place. If you have deer related issues to make sure you're picking things, you know, Osmanthus fragrance resistant to deer, Laura Petalum definitely resistant to deer. There's upright boxwoods. You definitely want to think through that and you can still do this, uh, just pick, you know, but picking from that group of really deer resistant plants and, you know, uh, you don't, you, know, one, you don't need one plant to fix the problem. You, more, the more plants, the better, and more species in the garden, the better. One other thing about design here is a lot of times, you know, I see most of the time, people will create, we're gonna create a border and we're gonna put something along it to screen the neighbor. Let's make this bed four or five feet wide and a straight line, you know, down the fence and, and, and call it a day and then plant that one row of, one row of shrubs or one row of trees or whatever it is. Uh, it's from design perspective, it looks a lot better if you'll go wider with that bed and allow yourself some space to step down from those larger things. And so you've got these tall, these tall things, but I didn't run lawn directly up to it or a patio directly up to it. There's an extra six foot of space here along the edge of these things. And it allows for lower growing shrubs, ground covers, annuals, containers, interesting things to be planted. You can, you know, use rock. You can use whatever you want to in your design. Uh, hydrangeas, great place for growing lower hydrangeas that need their kind of roots shaded here in the south, like hydrangea macrophylla over there. That's got its root shaded. It's getting good amount of sunlight on the top, but um, it's kind of protected by the plants that are, that are behind it. So leave a little extra space uh, if you can so that you can step down uh, over time and make a more interesting design where you're, you know, kind of looking up from these flowering things and these interesting foliage things up to your screening plants rather than just having, again, you know, just like a wall uh, created. It just grows right up out of your turf. Uh, this is, I think, a more interesting design uh, overall. So there you go. There's some of the reasons that I think about, you know, when I see, and I, this, this video, I did a video similar 
way back in the past, I just kind of bringing it up to date and talking about the subject again, because I do still see uh, all over the place, all over the city of Raleigh, new house going in right over here around the corner with, you know, one or two things used to screen the entire border. And I always think, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if something goes wrong with that particular plant in the future is they're going to lose their entire screen. And not only are they going to lose their entire screen, they're going to have to hire somebody in all likelihood with a backhoe uh, to come in and cut those things up and tote them out of there. And it's at pretty high expense. Uh, as well. And I've seen that many, many times over the years. So thank you guys very much for following along with the channel. What are some of your favorite plants to use for screening?